Welcome to Engine Power. Today we're starting the build of a new high performance vehicle that deserves to be in any gearhead's garage. It's called the 818, which stands for 818 kilograms or 1800 pounds. It's a mid-engine design with functioning brake ducts and slick aerodynamics. Plus, it's only three inches off the ground. It's the most affordable, lightweight, and best handling vehicle ever designed and manufactured by Factory 5 Racing. It's designed for worldwide distribution, comes in left or right hand configuration, and the components are available worldwide as well. The chassis design shares some similarities to their GTM supercar. This one's constructed from 083 wall square tubing and seven and 16 gauge plate steel. The roll bar is an inch and a half in diameter and 120 thousandths wall thickness. It's rear wheel drive and very well balanced. These are not kit cars, but component vehicles using parts from Factory 5 and well-known manufacturers in the automotive aftermarket, along with a donor Subaru Impreza or WRX. We've built a few Factory 5 vehicles in the past, from their GTM supercar powered by a Chevy Performance E-Rod engine package, a 33 Ford Hot Rod powered by a small block Ford, and the ever-famous MK4 Roadster. There are two engine options that are available, the first being an 02 through an 07 Subaru WRX or Impreza 2.5 liter turbocharged or naturally aspirated engine. The second being this Ford 2.3 liter EcoBoost. Now this little bullet is turbocharged and cranks out 310 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 320 pound feet at 3,000. It's direct injection and sports an aluminum block and cylinder head for a lightweight design. Using an adapter plate, Factory 5 has adapted a Subaru STI six-speed transaxle to it to give it that rear-wheel drive status. A five-speed Subaru trans will work as well. Now it's time to get started with assembly, and you'll be informed of the pieces and parts as they're getting installed. And we're gonna tackle this just like you would at home if you don't have a lift. We're positioning the chassis on its side to have easier access to the bottom of the car so the belly pan and a couple of other panels can be attached. Jesper is a lead engineer from Factory 5 and brought Tony and John to help out with this build. These panels are laser cut at Factory 5 and attached with rivets. Instead of the lift, we're building this car on jack stands to relate to the average DIYer. Basically, if you can turn a wrench, you are capable of building one of these cars. We have each corner of the suspension already assembled. The front uses a Subaru lower control arm, spindle, hub, rotor, and caliper. Factory 5 builds the spindle mounting bracket along with a fully adjustable upper control arm. The rear is similar using a Subaru spindle, hub, rotor, and caliper. Factory 5 builds the coilover mount which houses a Kony coilover shock and spring. The adjuster is a Factory 5 piece as well. The front suspension is going on now. Jesper is a Factory 5 engineer who plays a big part in the design and production of these cars. He made the trip to help us out with getting the car built. We use Subaru parts on this car for a number of reasons. Uh, Subarus have always been known as a performance car, uh, specifically the WRX and their rally driving. Um, it's also very widely available throughout the world. Um, which is, has been a problem with some of our other kits. You can't get Mustang parts in Venezuela or, you know, Timbuktu, you know. So we decided to go with something that's available internationally um, and also very cost effective too. The shocks are designed by Kony and Factory 5 in true R&D fashion. The valving and spring rates are determined by the car's weight and several hours of testing on track and street conditions. Bolting the suspension to the chassis doesn't get any easier. The mounting locations are spot on. Now the Subaru steering rack can go in. This one has a 16 and a half to one ratio. Followed by the front sway bar, which is actually the rear sway bar from a donor Subaru. Buttoning it up are Factory 5's end links. The front nose mount is ready to go on now. It attaches to six locations for strength and is the foundation for the carbon fiber splitter. And a Subaru radiator from the donor for effective cooling, which is secured with hold down brackets. 
This is the radiator for the air to water intercooler for the turbo system. It ensures the inlet air temperature stays in check in any driving condition. Now it's time to take a break. When we come back, the turbocharged power plant and six-speed gearbox is going in. We're back, and like we said, the engine and gearbox are ready to go in. This 2.3 liter EcoBoost is the same one found in the new Mustang, which weighs in at 3,532 pounds and runs the quarter mile in 13.9 seconds. This 818 is 1,732 pounds lighter. It's gonna be a rocket. Can you come down slowly? Once positioned, it rests on the chassis using factory five mounting bracket and urethane engine mounts. Good. The gearbox mounts the same way, a factory five bracket with urethane isolators. Now the CV axles can slide into the gearbox so the rear suspension can be installed. The rear suspension uses a trailing arm and tow links from an 06 to 07 Subaru donor. Coney shocks are used out back as well, along with more Subaru brakes. Now the rear shock support bracket can go on, and the 12 and a half gallon fuel tank that uses a stock Subaru fuel pump mounted inside of it. The fuel filter is from a C5 or C6 Corvette and has an internal regulator. It's for a return style fuel system. The next round of tin work is going in now. There are several stages with a lot more to come. A Willwood pedal box goes in next. It houses the clutch and brake pedal. Now it's aluminum for weight savings and provides excellent brake system performance. Their master cylinders are used for both the clutch and the brakes. They mount to the pedal box. And their reservoirs are mounted to the chassis. The brake lines are now ran along the chassis to their respective corner. The coolant tubes from the radiator to the engine are put in place. They also aid in cooling due to heat dispersing as the coolant passes through them. Flex pipe and heavy duty couplers complete the routing. Factory 5's custom tilt steering column is included. It's DOT approved with turn signal and hazard controls built in. Making the link from it to the steering rack is 3 quarter inch double D shaft and high end steering joints. A Momo adapter is used to attach the Factory 5 low profile steering wheel. Surprise! Time for another round of panels. The water to air intercooler is mounted underneath the engine. Attaching to it are aluminum pipes that go from the intercooler to the throttle body. The opposite side comes from the compressor of the turbo to the intercooler completing the loop. Circulating the coolant to the intercooler is an electric pump. Three quarter inch rubber hose transfers the coolant from up front. The final piece is the air filter and tube for the inlet of the turbo. Now the overflow tank for the radiator goes in, which wraps up the cooling system. Boom mat is placed on all the interior panels. It has an adhesive backing and can be easily trimmed with a razor knife. It will eliminate road, engine noise, and vibrations. Factory 5 supplies the fuse block and chassis harness. The block mounts in the driver's compartment for easy access. Now this is the same one used in their MK4 and the 33 hot rod. It's OEM quality with weather pack connectors going to all the components. To power the electrical system, an Optima red top battery is being mounted. It has 720 cold cranking amps. Out back, the engine's ECU is connected to the engine harness and mounted to the chassis. This is a Ford Racing standalone setup that controls the engine only. Once all the connections are made to the engine, it only requires a few power connections to function. The exhaust is short and sweet, literally. A high flow catalytic converter is paired with a stainless boiler muffler. Can't wait to hear what a 310 horsepower four cylinder sounds like through them. Evans coolant will fill the system. It's a waterless coolant that has a boiling point of 375 degrees versus water based coolant that turns to steam around 217. 93 octane fuel is recommended for the EcoBoost. You know we're getting close to hear it run. The dash houses the gauges and will let us monitor the vitals when the time comes. Along with the dash is an aluminum panel for the ignition switch and a couple other toggles. Two important facts you should know. 
Yes, the assembly takes time, and yes, again, it's as easy as it looks. This is probably, like I said, the easiest car. So for the normal guy at home with normal tools, you're taking apart, the hardest part is doing the donor. Tearing apart the donor, a lot of guys want to take it, sandblast the parts, they don't want to put, you know, rusty parts on a new car. So the ease of actually throwing it together isn't bad. Which leads us to round three of more tin work, which you've seen plenty. We'll be right back. We are back, and this Factory 5 818 build continues with the center console being installed. They supply the carpet as well. It's all pre-cut for the entire interior. Spray adhesive is used to secure it to the panels. Now the supplied Factory 5 billet aluminum shifter can be mounted and the cables attached to the gearbox. With everything exposed, adjustments are easy, and the results are smooth. Kirky Aluminum 15-degree layback road race seats are going in next. They have built-in shoulder supports, and extra support at the ribcage area provides support for the high G-force cornering. We wrap the exhaust with DEI's titanium heat wrap. With the chassis, interior, this is cool. It is cool. And drivetrain now complete, yep. the moment we've all been waiting for. That was That's awesome. Very nice. Oh, this thing's gonna be wicked. Nothing, uh, nothing shooting out of it anywhere? No Anybody vibration. Any? I don't think we got any leaks. That being the case, we're going to the dyno without the body. After all, we call it a chassis dyno. Strapping it down is also an easy task with everything being exposed. Enough of the reasoning. It was just cool to do it this way. Now this reminds me of the go-kart all of us wanted as a kid. Yep, 268 horsepower, 292 pound-feet of torque. Not bad for the first That's, blast. That is an excellent first blast right there. That's pretty That's good. Not bad, dude. Four bangers are a lot more impressive Man. than they were 10 years yeah, ago, weren't they? For sure. There's not much of a parasitic loss to now, this gearbox either. Transaxle, no, it's yeah. nice. Yeah, very nice. Now with more heat in the drivetrain like oil temp and the intercooler temp back down, we're spinning it up again. 273 horsepower. 300 pound feet. 300 pound feet. That'll get it done at 1,800 pounds. Yeah, that, 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 that is. Uh, I think it sounds killer. That yeah. is, is pretty sporty for an 18, 1,800 nice. pound car. It's going to be awesome. Now we're going to let the intercooler pumps run and the fan do its job to cool it down. Which leads us to this power pull. Oh, yeah. 280, 309 pound feet. 280 yeah. horse, 309 pound feet. Wow, dude, that's crazy. Absolutely incredible for an engine that's 2.3 liter for one thing. Yeah, 2.3. Unbelievable. That's two unbelievable. Ford's got it going on. Yep. That crazy stuff. Now back to the stands to give the chassis some cover. We'll be right back. The time has come to skin the 818. The panels are just like a production car and can be ordered individual from Factory 5 if they are damaged. Try doing that with a one-piece body. Everything we do is made in-house, so we actually make the molds in-house. Everything is hand-laid, gel-coated. And this car is a lot different than the other cars that we really have, just because the bodies on the Mark IV and the hot rods are one full panel, which these are a panel car. So you have doors, rear quarters, fenders. So it's a lot easier for a guy at home to actually prep them and paint them, or if they're going to take them to a body shop, they price it out a lot cheaper to actually have it painted that way. Tony sprayed them Deep Impact Blue, which is found on the 2015 Mustang. It's also the color of the EcoBoost logo on the 2.3's engine cover. The first part of the body to go on are the rear quarter panels. They are very rigid and secure to the frame with rivets. Now the tail panel goes on. It houses the taillights and gives the rear of an 818 an aggressive supercar look. Next up are the doors. They are reinforced with steel square tubing and are still lightweight. They align without any issues, just like a piece of a puzzle. Goes to show the quality of this body. The roof gives the true look of the 818's aerodynamics. It's designed for plenty of interior headroom for the driver and passenger what? and fits just like the rest of the panels. Uh, I want to grab you need the, the Allen wrench. At 23, yeah. John Dean is the youngest member of this team. 
but he's no rookie. I started out in welding department, welding chassis, components. Um, roughly two years after that, they pulled me into R&D to do the new 818 project. Um, when that was completed, I followed that back to Weldon, built chassis for a year, and now I'm back in R&D working with Jim and Tony and everybody in the office. Time to finish with the body panels. With each piece, this go-kart's transformation is becoming a reality, which is a very powerful, lightweight, eye-catching, do-it-yourself component contender, suitable for the track or the street. Looks killer on the ground. Sounds like killer. Wow. That's a nice color. Yeah, who picked the color? Did you pick the color? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's, a, that's a home run. And the, and the gray good. and all that looks beautiful. Looks good. The stance of the car, the aerodynamics of the car, it just, and it came together in five quick. days from yeah, bare quick. frame. That's just phenomenal. I can't believe how much power it has. An 1,800 pound car with you know 280 horse at the tire. Crazy. That's, uh, that's gonna be spicy to say the least. They're gonna surprise a lot of people in the street. Sure is. Yeah. I mean, you, know, just, you never know. Technology is just crazy now. Yeah. yeah. It's Absolutely. amazing. And, and you got you guys to thank for that because the ease that this thing went together is a true testament of the engineering for one thing and uh, just the thought process that goes into making a car that's so user friendly to put together and look at the end result. Thanks very much. Yeah. It, it was great, great, great working with everybody. Yeah. Seeing you again, brother. You guys great did a great teamwork. job. Thanks, man. Yeah. Love it. Thanks, nice work Thanks. with you, John. And Tony. Tony. It's always a pleasure, buddy. It's been a long time, bud. Always a pleasure. Doing it for a long time. Looking good. I love the car. It's a good car. Uh, it's nice to see that you know new hard top for it. Nice to have the different options for motors. With over 350 pre-orders on the car, told us that, number one, we picked a great platform. Uh, we also designed a great looking car as well. Arguably, the most talked about component of any bench race session is the camshaft. Engine builders and racers alike keep their cam specs a closely guarded secret no matter the application. It's the brains of the engine opening and closing the valves at very precise times to make power. This tech tip will educate you on the types of cams most commonly used. The first style we'll discuss are flat tappet camshafts. Made from a chilled iron core, they're the most common and economical type of cam used by us gearheads in our street and weekend race cars since hot rodding started back in the 1950s. What we mean by flat tappet is the lifter that rides on the lobe appears to have a flat bottom. It's not, it's actually convex or domed. Putting them together, you can see that they aren't flush. Be it ever so slightly, it's enough. The camshaft's lobe is ground with a very slight amount of taper in it, and the lifter rides slightly offset to promote rotation. This design minimizes wear on both contact surfaces. Proper break-in lube that is usually supplied with the camshaft must be used. Flat tappet cams do require a specific break-in procedure to ensure they will live. If the lifters aren't able to rotate during break-in, it will cause the lobes and lifters to grind against each other, causing catastrophic damage and ruining your new setup. Keep varying the RPM of the engine for 20 to 30 minutes while breaking in a new cam. 1500 to 2500 RPM will keep oil splashing on the cam and lifters to help with break-in. Never let a new flat tappet cam idle on initial fire -up. And finally, never put a new set of lifters on an old camshaft or vice versa. This will cause a mismatch in established wear patterns and potentially wreck both components like it would if you use the wrong lube on it. Next up are roller cams. And like the name implies, the lifter has a roller on the bottom of it that rides on a lobe, reducing friction, therefore reducing parasitic loss of power. The lifter can also follow a way more aggressive camshaft profile, taking advantage of modified induction pipes. but these lifters are specifically designed not to rotate, so they must be held straight by a tie bar or a lifter guide. Both flat tappet and roller lifters can be either hydraulic or solid actuated, but it is important to know that the lobes are engineered for their respective lifters, so trying to convert a hydraulic to a solid, whether it's a flat tappet or a roller, is a big no-no, so don't try it. And picking the right cam for your combo is an entirely different conversation we're gonna bring to you at another time, so watch for it in the future. Well, that's enough for one week. Now, we don't know what Factory 5 has in the plans for the future as far as projects, but what I do know is whatever it is, it'll be built right here. We'll see you next time.